Mental. So let me say that to begin with. And this is Carrie Cassidy from Project Camelot. And uh, today is Monday, uh, let's see, May 14th. And uh, I am here with Ramona and Mahe. I'm not sure how you say your, your names very well. So uh, are you both from Romania or, or are you from different places? Yes, no, I'm from Romania. Yeah, and she's also from Romania. Okay. And uh, you are involved in a yoga, I don't know if you call it a clinic or a workshop or, or, or organization. A school. A school. Okay, and you've been having some problems with uh, with the school uh, with for some reason, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so why don't you first introduce yourselves uh, one at a time and tell a little bit about yourself, how you got involved in in you know the the uh, organization, et cetera, et cetera, and then we will uh, sort of, I will ask questions to get into the story as to what's going on over there, okay? Yes. Okay. So why don't, uh, do you want to start, Ramona? Yes, I can show you. I'm practicing yoga in the school for almost 20 years, and it's a school that has really big value, like in knowledge, awareness. It's a yoga school, traditional teachings. And uh, it has helped me a lot and many other people in all these years. And uh, what I found out uh, all along these years is that, um, especially in Romania, also during the this, this uh, spiritual movement was like forbidden or something anyway, threatened, and people that were practicing it, even if most of them are uh, intellectual, they were having problems after only joining the courses. There were many makeups and uh, it's something like you should be, you should have, you are probably having problems if you say that you practice yoga. And then uh, it's a long story that uh, Mihai will tell you. I mean, he's much more involved in this. And uh, so, okay. shortly for now, yeah. All right. Uh, Mihail, had, however you say your name, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Uh, you you can also turn on your video because you do have video, correct? I I, I think I turn it on. I thought I turned it on. Okay, looks like it's, it's not on. it's not on at the moment. Um, Just a second. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't see the button for video anymore. Now we are on this conference. Yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, I'm not sure what to do about that. <laughs> okay, well, it, it, it may be because we called uh, in Ramona. I that think, yeah, the conference might not uh, allow the video because I was I, I saw the video starting and when you called, uh, when you called Ramona, it disappeared. Okay. Uh, so what we'll do is just use uh, the audio then for this this yes well for this pr presentation. Uh, so Mihail, can you tell a little bit about yourself and what the situation is uh, with regard to the comp the the organization and what's going on there? Yes. So first of all, my name is Mihai Stoyan. This is how you spell it in Romanian. So. Um, I started it um, within this uh, yoga school in 1989, and uh, I, uh, as a profession, I am formed as a scientific researcher in uh, uh, first in nuclear technology, and then I specialized in artificial intelligence. Uh, this is my background, but of course I also studied yoga, tantra, and I am teaching since 1993 already I'm teaching yoga. So th this I did parallel with um, the other activities in university and in the scientific field where I was working. Currently I'm living in Copenhagen since uh, 2002 and I'm coordinating a yoga school here in Copenhagen which is in fact a sister school with the one in Romania. 
And uh, well, um, the situation with this um, uh, yoga school from Romania is, uh, in fact, I, what I would call um, signaling factor for some underground uh, phenomena which happen in the society generally. Maybe not only in Romania. We have some uh, clear indications that it's not only in Romania um, what we have encountered uh, there. So, um, very few know that in uh, the communist time, in, before 1989, in Romania yoga was forbidden. Uh, since uh, 1982, it was a law, and uh, uh, during the time, everybody who would practice yoga or karate or anything which is uh, this uh, oriental spirituality would be put in jail. What? And then, well, at that, that time, that, um, it, that seems very strange. Well, it is very strange, and uh, actually, it has some relevance for the story because you see. The communists were uh, afraid of, um, you know, conspirations, they were afraid of all kinds of things, but it's very strange that at a certain point they were afraid of yoga. And that reveals, in fact, a kind of other force, which was, even in the communist time, behind the screen, so to speak, or behind the stage. And this force was, in fact, what we call the occult power. That was behind the communism and also afraid of anyone who will try to, let's say, study spirituality, to free the mind of people and so on. All these aspects were kind of regarded with great fear by the authorities at that time. And they went so far as to put in 1982 a law against these kind of practices and uh, many people were put in jail because of practicing yoga, because of being in a martial art club, things like that. And uh, uh, my teacher, uh, about which we will uh, talk a little later, he is the one who was actually put in jail several times by the communists because of uh, what they say at the time, he was trying to kill Ceausescu, the communist dictator of Romania at that time, with paranormal powers. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> so that was uh, one of the things which can already put a kind of um, question mark upon this, uh, well, intentions of the communist regime. Then um, also he was the one, the only person in um, Romania during the communist regime who escaped the Securitate. Securitate was the name of the secret police during the communist regime and it was very fierce in uh, Romania and quite famous in Europe, the Romanian secret service of the communist regime. And um, uh, once when he was arrested, he escaped this uh, special arrest, the special building the regime has at the time, uh, using some uh, yogic methods that he was applying at the time. It's the only case of a person managing to escape the, the secret uh, police. And okay, uh, now, uh, what year was this? This was 1987. Okay, and at that time when he escaped using, as you say, special powers, yeah. uh, and and is it, this is your teacher? Yes, he's okay. my teacher. His name is Gregorian Bivolaru. Okay, is there evidence of this? In other words, uh, documentation, other kinds of evidence? Yeah, there are some uh, testimonies about this, plus one of the, well, indirect, but quite obvious evidence, was that he, afterwards, when he himself uh, went to the authorities after a while, because he did this gesture just as a protest. He didn't want to, he didn't have anywhere to run away, actually, uh, because Romania was surrounded in, in this communist bloc. 
and uh, he just wanted to protest against the fact that uh, he was illegally arrested and so on. And he was tried after that for escaping the arrest of the secret police. So practically, he is also uh, at the time a paradoxic, uh, para uh, juridical paradox because he was uh, in prison for the fact that he escaped the prison. But there is absolutely no explanation <laughs> why he was in prison. Okay. So we have this documented very well. We have uh, the whole file, which is, as I said, the juridical paradox. He okay. Is, the only uh, person... are, is this on the internet anywhere? Um, I will put here. Yes, it is on gregoriandivoraro.com. I can write it uh, on. Okay. Uh, down. When uh, well, you can send it to me after. But uh, yes, if you want to type it in there, you can as well, um, and then I'll make it visible for people to see. Um, okay, so, but but so your pe is your teacher still in prison? No, of course. After nineteen eighty nine, he was uh, he was released, and uh, um, apparently things got uh, better for a little while. But uh, but uh, the system continued, which gave us more and more um, reasons to believe. In the beginning, to believe. Now we are very sure because we have encountered the system that in fact there is much more than just the communist regime which was uh, installed in Romania and then it failed in 1989. So the occult power remained in power. Only the social organization changed and uh, we became a democratic country but still the same uh, people Almost the same people were holding key positions, and also the transfer of power is done in ways which actually we don't find only in Romania. <laughs> yes, I understand. Okay, yes. very good. Uh, well, le let me say that uh, this individual uh, trying to escape from, was it a, pri a prison in Romania, was it a prison in Russia? No, it was in Romania, in Bucharest. Okay. It, it was the most secure location of the country. Okay, and what exactly did he do? Well, um, he practically um, put the guards in the suggestion to take him out from the cell uh -huh. and bring him to the... Uh, to a, a place where um, you have this uh, ventilation um, for the, you know, from time to time prisoners are taken out to Outdoors. a small place to walk around there. I see. And uh, at that place, he also co suggested the guards to leave him alone and to leave the door open, which they did. And he went through that to a place where the um, other uh, people who were cleaning there, they were leaving the stair on the wall. And he climbed that stair, and then he went, uh, well, over some walls or something, and uh, after that he went out. It was uh, just a very simple place to went out. Now, I know this uh, story, of course, directly from him, and um, what he was uh, explaining was that, in fact, the, the exercise he was doing was a powerful exercise of suggestion combined with an exercise of searching the vicinity of the prison because he couldn't know where exactly will be the stair, where the wall is possible to go uh, over and so on. So he investigated that in a certain way of remote viewing. Sure. And after that, he prepared all this very, very well. So he executed it in two minutes or something, the whole uh, thing, and uh, <laughs> off he went. <laughs> okay, very good. All right. So then was at this time that he did this was, I guess, yoga was being still banned? Yeah, it was in uh, be, yoga was officially banned between 1982 and 1989. Okay. This event happened in 1987. 
Okay. In the middle of the persecutions and while the communist regime was uh, starting to give s severe signs of uh, the cave. Okay, so. uh, very, very, very interesting. All right, and so uh, this is news to me actually that, that yoga was, uh, was uh, against the law in uh, Romania for all those years. It is the only country in the world who <laughs> had the law. Okay, interesting. Okay, so then what happened? When did your organization start up? So now, of course, the organization illegally started uh, in the communist time, but uh, legally, 1990, in January, the organization uh, officially uh, went uh, out, so to speak, and uh, it became uh, the movement for spiritual integration into the absolute. That was the name. Uh, of the organization at the time, of this school. And it was organized as a school, with classes, with teacher training courses, with uh, acknowledged teachers, with diplomas and everything, but of course not by the state. Uh, this acknowledgement is internal because the state is uh, not participating except problems. I see. So, then uh, of course the situation started immediately after 1990, 1990 to deteriorate they are of course the new method of the authorities was uh, slander and uh, practically using the media which in many countries uh, former communist countries is still in the hands of big uh, well big guys or big organizations and in Romania the media is owned by the state because of the debts they have they, most of the uh, big media uh, companies, they have immense debts to the state. So, um, in this way, they started to write all kind of strange articles. During the next few years, um, this individual, Gregorian, plus the school that was growing extremely fast, uh, was accused of anything you can imagine from paranormal, paramilitary, sorry, paramilitary organization to uh, human sacrifices on full moon and, uh, of course, drugs and uh, the other things are common. And um, no, no one ever uh, proved anything. So there were just thousands and thousands of articles and TV news until the point where simply the people who were practicing yoga, they were ashamed to say that they are practicing yoga because simply they were afraid that, you know, they, they can be beaten on the street or something. Hmm. So they, it was a bit plus, of course, this uh, was not only media. In uh, moments like 1996, for instance, masked police, anti-terror, these uh, masked guys, they... Uh, rush into a yoga hall where over 300 people were practicing and they um, pretended it was uh, somehow a problem with some stealing some computers or something and they depicted all the people in the yoga room as uh, criminals. Of course, they didn't apologize afterwards saying that it was a mistake. They beat some people and in 1996 Amnesty International issued a part of their East Europe report was about this uh, incident. For instance, just to give you an example of uh, kind of events. So the story was uh, continuing and actually it started to um, build up more and more social tension and uh, even uh, the lies that different organizations, uh, governmental organizations were saying about the movements were bigger and bigger. Uh, they, uh, for instance, Mr. Gregorian Vivolaro was called in the parliament as Satan incarnated. Okay, and, uh, and why was he called this? Because uh, the, that uh, respective parliamentarian was very angry that uh, uh, he uh, was not listened by the rest of the people to put uh, Gregorian and every yogi directly in jail without any 
other uh, well investigation and so on. It was a kind of witch hunt. I see. In, and and this most, went this went on w during what years? From 1992 until 2004. Okay. With some peaks, as I said, 96, 97 again, some abuses, people beaten and so on. Um, Incredible. And, and so on. In, 90, in 2000, 2001, and then 2004, it was kind of the explosion where uh, uh, the Romanian authorities triggered what they called at that time the biggest operation against organized crime. Uh, and uh, they went uh, on, they arrested people, they confiscated um, people's goods from the houses, and uh, they uh, did, well, a lot, a lot of abuses, immense, many. It, it's very difficult to name everything now. But, okay, uh, um, but was it again, uh, were they after uh, practitioners of uh, yoga and other kinds of Eastern uh, mysticism, uh, remote viewing, this sort of thing? Well, actually, uh, here is the, let's say, tricky part of this uh, story. You see, even in the communist time, even though if yoga was forbidden uh, and Gregory and Bimular and other practitioners were in jail, the communists was that they never admitted political involvement of uh, any case. So every time they wrap everything in some common criminal things, they frame you with anything. Of course, at that time it was much easier to frame people. Nowadays, they also frame them. So, with other words, except um, some uh, media stories and so on, officially it was never an accusation that uh, you are practicing yoga or that you are doing some, I don't know, things which can uh, give you um, paranormal powers or something. No, they, they were constantly <laughs> trying to insinuate all kinds of stories, as okay. I mentioned before. So now, for instance, uh, just to give an example, when they raid many, many houses in the same morning and take people's goods with trucks and beat people and so on, they were saying that they have a kind of... A, report that at these locations, people are uh, breaking the copyright law. Okay. Which is absolutely absurd. <laughs> I mean, first of all, just try to read on the internet, see where Romania stands in the copyright law. I mean, it's probably the one of the countries champion in breaking the copyright law in any sense. Probably with India and well, other Russia. So, uh, such an operation is an absurdity in itself, but they put it, we have the papers which were signed by judges, and uh, the papers which the prosecutors were trying to excuse that activity. Of course, the strange thing is that when they came, they came also together with all the media, and the media didn't report any word about copyright. They were speaking about organized crime, of uh, trafficking human beings, of uh, uh, care, uh, trafficking, no, selling weapons, um, drug dealing, and all kinds of things. Okay, but, though, but in regard, in reality, what, what had these people done wrong? Anything? Well, they were uh, doing something terribly wrong in the eyes of these people. They were part of this yoga school. They, so they were practicing have, yoga. Yeah, they were they were yoga practitioners, and you see, uh, it it started to happen among the yoga practitioners in this school that they were in time grouping together two, three, five people in different uh, locations. They were building a kind of a replica of what is in India called ashrams. Yes. If you heard about this uh, notion of an ashram, yes. Well, they were trying, of course, you know the. Yoga is uh, coming as a tradition from India, and many practitioners are studying also the traditional uh, integration of yoga in the daily life. And they were trying to have such spiritual communities. And the police was raiding, especially these locations where, um, well, people were, most of them, not all of them, most of them yoga practitioners. So that was what they had in common. 
And of course, they tried also, they were storming uh, Gregorian's house. They destroyed absolutely everything there. We have pictures how the house was looking before and how the, the apartment, not the house, but it was the apartment, was looking afterwards. And uh, you see, that's uh, what okay. they, they were trying to impress him. Of course, uh, they tried this before. In 1995, in February, after Gregorian was publishing two books about uh, the Freemasonry, the Freemasonry, and uh, he's the first one in Romania who was talking openly about this and the occult power and so on. He published that in December 1994, and in February 1995, he was threatened by the representatives of this occult power in Romania to stop, and he was given a lesson. And the lesson consisted into a bomb which was placed in his apartment, and uh, of course not only destroyed the apartment, but destroyed almost the entire building. Uh, of course, we have uh, two independent um, investigations from two commissions which were uh, saying that the explosion was man-made, it was not uh, an accident, as of course all the media reported. They all reported that it was an explosion from a um, gas leak in the building. But uh, Interesting enough, his apartment was gone, exploding, and the rest of the building was affected by the explosion. And uh, the expertise from two independent commissions has concluded, and we have these reports, of course, that uh, it was an ex explosion provoked by purpose, by someone who placed their uh, quantity of uh, substance. And, I see. Uh, okay. Now, uh, when you're talking about these raids that are happening, they're happening now as well, is what you're saying? Well, actually, in, since 2004, the situation uh, went uh, a little strange because the raids stopped in, in that form, violent form. Also okay. because the international, especially European, attention turned towards this case. And uh, uh, Mr. Bivolaro was granted political asylum in Sweden. And he's the only one now enjoying political asylum, being a citizen of a member country, having political asylum in another member country of European Union. And uh, it's a topic which even the Swedish politicians don't want to raise or to talk about because it gives headaches to everyone uh, when they try to understand how is it possible in the European Union to have a citizen which is enjoying political asylum in the European Union. But oh, okay, but, uh, but the person who is getting a political asylum is who? Is Mr. Bivolaro, Gregorian Bivolaro. Oh, really? Okay. So yes, your, your teacher is now, have, he has political asylum in Europe? In Sweden, yes. In Sweden. Okay, fine. Exactly. Um, so, now, okay. Yes. So, no, but... but when did just, these raids start? And because you contacted me recently, so what is going on now? Well, what is going on now is the conclusion of what started in 2004. Okay. So, seeing that uh, they practically lost the chance to get Mr. Bivolaru, they requested extradition in Romania and the Swedish uh, state refused. And the reason was that he his life will be endangered in Romania and he will not receive a fair trial. That was the conclusion of the Supreme Court in Stockholm. Uh, since then, of course, they were trying to prove that this was not uh, happening and so on. So, practically, there were no violences except minor uh, things which, uh, well, they didn't exceed a certain limit. Uh, what is happening now is that in the court, the files that they have started in 2004 against Mr. Bivaru and against many other yoga teachers and the school, they are, until now, they were kind of following their um, juridical uh, procedures, and now they, they find that they reached to a conclusion after almost eight years. And uh, they started it again with maneuvers 
to obtain an official, um, let's say, paper or um, to obtain a decision of the court that will incriminate either Mr. Bivolaru or the school. So, of course, these maneuvers uh, in the beginning they were very light and it didn't work under the international pressure. We came, for instance, the um, European Union sent observers to some of the trials yeah. of Mr. Bukharu and Misa to Bucharest. Oh, I to see. The... But even though that this happened and two courts declared in one of the files, because there were more files, in one of the files repeatedly declared Mr. Bivolaru innocent when the most severe uh, part of the penal code, which is saying the fact incriminated doesn't exist, so it's not uh, that decision which is saying uh, not enough evidences or something. They were concluding the fact incriminated doesn't exist. So even though the, the court decided two times this, now the Supreme Court started to bring in all kinds of strange, um, for instance, papers from the, secret, the secret police, which were completely strange and uh, manufactured, obviously, uh, changing the judges, uh, doing maneuvers which we got used with, signaling that in this moment they are desperately trying to get him or uh, someone from the school convicted. Okay, so and, this and, is this is, and this is happening since when? Well, this is happening since uh, March. March of, since March of this year, 2012. This year, 2012. Okay. And since March also, it's happening that uh, more than 50 European parliamentarians were sending to Bucharest letters of protest signed personally uh, to the Prime Minister and to the Minister of Justice of Romania to, of course, to bring attention into this case. And interesting, the Romanian media and the Romanian authorities, who otherwise they are very pro-European, didn't mention anything about this, uh, I would say, immense attention from the European Union. I mean, 50 European parliamentarians to send letters to Bucharest is a big event for a country like Romania. Huh. Huge. Okay. And you cannot find any, not even one line in the media, even though we have the letters. I mean, there is no doubt about that. You can speak with the parliamentarians who signed the letters and so on. I mean, it's, a, it's something which is not uh, debatable. Okay. And, uh, so, now, let me, let me ask you something. Uh, have you ever heard of this person named Radu Sinemar? Uh, yes. Okay. And are you aware of the what is called um, the Romanian Sphinx? Yeah, I not only that I'm aware, I've been doing research in that area. Okay, well, I have uh, part of the reason <laughs> I have you on the air here with me, and I'm going to see if I can get this to show up on the screen here, and I'm not sure how this, uh, this will work, but I, I will try it. Um, so are you able to see this right now? Maybe not, huh? I, I'm mm. I'm putting this on. Um, I'm holding the book up to my camera here on. Um... Oh, because I I lost the video connection. I told oh, you. All I, right. Yes. I, okay. Yeah. Well, this is called. Uh, it's. Uh, it was sent to me by Peter Moon, somebody yeah. I've interviewed. He's a publisher who has been to Romania, and he ha yeah. he has uh, co-edited uh, this book along with this person Radu Cinema. And uh, it is all about the Romanian Sphinx, but it is about a discovery that happened in Romania recently, uh, yeah. I, I guess in the last few years, actually, and that the American government is very involved in, which has yeah. to do with uh, a special secret, um, well, you might call it a cavern or uh, that's put in under the ground in, in this mountain. Yeah. Uh, the mountain is yeah. on the picture here. Um, and, yeah, uh, and, and I, I know it very well because uh, I've been there several times and I okay. even collected uh, evidences about this. Okay, very good. So, uh, are you familiar with the person who goes by the name in the book of Caesar? I don't know if that's his real name. Well, uh, um, not with that person. I, I don't know who is that person, the, the real identity of, the, of Caesar. 
Okay. I know for uh, for a fact that the zero department of the yes. secret police exists. I I know di directly this uh, information from uh, somebody there, and also I have encountered uh, well uh, different uh, uh, exper different um, phenomena which is described by Radu Chinamar in his book. Okay, um, and so. Does I uh, just out of curiosity, does your teacher also know about this? Yes, he is one of the people who are actually um, raising a lot of um, questions, and actually he was telling a lot of uh, aspects related not only to that uh, particular secret, but also to all, many other things which uh, were taking place in Romania similar to this one. Okay, it uh, looks like we lost Ramona. Um, and I'm going to try to uh, see if I can get, uh, to, to get some information up here. Um, I'm going to search for it uh, so I can put the book up here um, yeah. while, so people can see what we're talking about here. The reason I'm bringing this up during this interview is that um, I, I know that you are in Romania and I thought perhaps you might know about this this uh, very secret project and it has to do with time travel but it has also got a lot to do with um, altered states of mind and yeah. uh, and and things like you know remote viewing and so on and there is um, you know this is a very important project that has to do with this uh, this discovery in, as I said, this uh, mountain in Romania. And do you know the name of the mountain? Well, the chain mountain there is called Bucej. I spell it here. Yeah. Okay. And uh, there, I just yeah. want to let everyone know that uh, Peter Moon has um, has a website, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually trying to see if we can get uh, more information about this right now um so if you want to hold on one minute yes uh i i'm i'm trying to enlarge this picture i don't know if it's going to work but here um for the for the the viewers to see hold on one second uh peter moon is somebody who has been very involved in the montauk project as well and also with uh with uh, information to do with time travel, uh, David Anderson and uh, and many other aspects of time travel that were involved in the Montauk project and more. Uh, so the reason, again, I'm bringing this up though, because I am curious that you're saying that there is a crackdown on yoga and uh, as you say, it's escalating or it seems to be escalating and this is why you contacted me at this time, right? Yeah. Yes, and but it, it also has to do with these paranormal elements right. that um, uh, these people from the Ogul power, they are not interested in any way to be studied, for the people to be interested into, and so on. And right. You, the link is very correct that you made. <laughs> uh, well, yes, they are, they are very concerned about this, but, but there's a reason for that, and it has to do, I believe, it has to something to do with this discovery. Um, in which uh, they realize uh, the danger in people uh, obtaining these these paranormal powers, and that yeah. they are no longer going to be controllable. And this is has many implications for for the world, as as a matter of fact, for freedom around the world, and not just in Romania. Um, so I wanted to bring it up. Uh, can you tell us anything that you have learned about this uh, this installation, which is is quite stupendous? Uh, I do know that I'm reading this book and the United States government uh, on a very top secret level got very involved with the Romanian government in uh, and actually they went in with a special technology to uh, open up these caverns because it was originally uh, closed off in the mountain and uh, mm -hmm. that on top of it they revealed this device which is in there and um, and you can appreciate that this is uh, the implications for the world are are, are very very huge. Um, on top of it, apparently, they discovered the the same kind of a device in a very secret place in Iraq, and this is why one of the major reasons they invaded Iraq, as a matter of fact. And um, what happened was that when this device in this mountain was activated. 
uh, by this individual who called himself Caesar, or uh, by the and partially uh, by the the opening of the cavern, I, I believe. Um, it, then there was a corresponding uh, activation that happened in the one in Iraq at the same time, um, and there was a hologram that that emerged, and on the hologram in Iraq showed the uh, the Romanian uh, Sphinx, the area inside that mountain. It showed that device in Iraq on that hologram in Iraq, um, which is he heavily guarded by U.S. military. So I, I'm just um, I'm, I'm connecting the dots here for people, but uh, this persecution of of the yoga uh, and people that are following a, sort of a spiritual path, because one of the things that happens when you follow a spiritual path is you, especially through yoga and various disciplines of this kind, having to do with uh, exploring the higher mind, what you do is you raise your vib vibration. Yes, and what that does is, uh, it's it's quite obvious to me that this device that they've discovered also is a sort of, uh, there's a sort of portal or frequency gate in which uh, people can enter, but you can only enter if you have the right vibration, and if you don't, uh, apparently you, you, you die. Um, so I, I'm sure that they're very concerned over this because the potential for even the possibility of, a, of, a, of a, what it might be called a, an ascension gate uh, is, is very great for this place. And so uh, this is why they're persecuting why they're yoga. suppressing kind of information like that, um, which has an um, efficiency. Because you see, they don't try to suppress uh, fitness, they don't try to suppress all kinds of things similar to yoga, but everything which has a spiritual touch which has an ascendant orientation, yes. suddenly find itself in the blacklist. And I, I have a theory uh, that is because I have been to Egypt many times and I've noticed that they will not let us pr uh, do yoga or, or meditate okay. in, in, the, uh, in the sacred places in the temples in, your, in, in um, Egypt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they we have been that. banning us from meditating there and uh, it's the same pr premise. They are afraid of what is going to happen when groups of people get together to meditate in one place, in one of these power places, which ha what happens in a power place when you meditate is it, it accentuates and augments the power of your meditation as well as the link up between you and whatever you're, you're uh, attempting to connect with, et cetera, et cetera. And the potential is very great for transformation on the planet as well as for your own transformation. Well, in this respect, I can uh, tell you a direct uh, first-hand experience in Egypt with um, our teacher okay. in 1989. Um, now that you open the subject, which gives a very good confirmation of what you just said uh, now. If you allow me, I can give you two yes, minutes. Yes, uh, please do. Yeah. So, uh, we decided to go in 1999, just before year 2000, you know, this celebration where also it was a concert with Jean-Michel Jean Jarre at the Great uh, Giza Plateau. Um, so, we were there in uh, December uh, 2000, uh, 1999, sorry, and uh, there we applied to do a special meditation in the Great Pyramid, in the sacred chamber there. And uh, in the beginning, of course, we, we met a lot of resistance and exactly as you mentioned there. And uh, I went with uh, a colleague of mine to speak with uh, the person who is the chief archaeologist in, um, in that area. And um, this uh, person who is the one who always represents Egypt in Discovery Channel and so on, is the voice there. Yes, well to, he, he's been thrown in jail uh, since then, but his name is Zahi Hawass. Zahi Hawass, yes. And um, with him I, I was uh, talking at that time, and um, without, I think he just mistaken me with someone else, he took me in a meeting in a hotel just next to the um, Great Pyramid, it's a very luxurious hotel there, it was a meeting of some uh, people from an occult organization, and um, they were planning to put on top of the Great Pyramid in the night of year between 1999 and 2000, simultaneous with the ritual which was supposed to take place in the pyramid, 
to put the capstone of the pyramid with a great eye on it. And uh, his expression when he presented that was, in conclusion, in this way the world, even without knowing, they will see who's are the ru- who are the rulers. <laughs> I have it. I have it on audio because I have the inspiration to start a recorder while uh, he was presented that. Okay, and, very uh, good. And uh, this um, after this meeting, he was even explaining the two methods they were choosing. They were saying that uh, it would be ten minutes of attention from all the media in the world, exactly ten minutes before twelve o'clock Egyptian uh, time. And uh, they will, in those 10 minutes, put this capstone uh, f- made of gold and crystals and so on. And uh, they have two choices. They said uh, they will bring a huge helicopter to bring it in one piece, or they will have special teams to assemble, to carry it up on their shoulders and in pieces and assemble it quickly on top of the pyramid when all the televisions will switch to Egypt. And as a... Uh, Candy to cover all this, they were arranging this uh, concert of Jean Michel Jacques to take place right in front of the pyramids. Because okay. in this way, the ritual they were having within, inside, Incredible. will be kind of going uh, unnoticed. I see. And uh, the interesting story was that uh, ex- uh, we find out about this um, situation. Uh, by this amazing uh, synchronicity that I was mistaken with someone else and I was taken in to this meeting. <laughs> and Mr. Hawaz even saluted me in the end and let me, uh, he drive me with the car. Uh, <laughs> uh, and um, even though I never met him before, so uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> That's and funny. then of course, uh, I, uh, we were talking about this also with uh, our teacher, with Greg, and uh, he... He said, why don't we start to meditate so that the things will be harmonious uh, in this passing time of between 1999 and 2000, exactly in that half an hour. Well, well, many he gave this signal and I think there were thousands and thousands of people who were meditating, meditating at that hour. Fact is that half an hour before 12 o'clock, suddenly, even against the meteorologic prediction, it started a sandstorm. People who were watching the Jean-Michel Jean concert, they knew that, they saw that. It started a sandstorm, which almost stopped the concert. But because these guys chose to use the big helicopter to put the capstone, they couldn't do it because the helicopter couldn't take off. <laughs> so um, the moment was lost from this perspective. Uh-huh. Now, of course, I'm not saying that uh, that meditation determined completely the, uh, this uh, chain of events, but, of course, some people could connect the dots, and, of course, that make uh, Gregorian de Volaro even more unwanted somehow by some. I see. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's fascinating. Uh, well, I'm going to be in Egypt on uh, December 21st, 2012, with a group. And we are uh-huh. going to uh, meditate in the area of the pyramid um, and go into the pyramid the day before. Um, yeah. And uh, there are many people, many groups that will be there then as well. I'm sure that they will possibly have some plans as well to try to do something of this nature then. Um, yes. That's very interesting. Well. Uh, to get back to the persecution of the yoga school, is there anything else that you want to tell me about what's going on with that situation at this time? And is there anything that people can do who are listening to this broadcast? Uh, if I put it on my um, my YouTube channel as well as put it, uh, you know, announce it on my website, uh, and you are welcome to also do the same with yours. Um, is there anything that you want people to do to help protect? the yoga well, uh, organization or the practice of, all, of yoga? They, they can, we can put um, pressure on the authorities. If they have friends which are working for European authorities, to uh, at least persuade them to look into the facts. Because once these things are coming out in open, it's very difficult for the authorities in Romania to continue this insane uh, race. Because they will not have any reason. And then, of course, uh, well, 
I don't think they will go like the communist regime just to arrest people and that's it. They will a little be, uh, they will be a little more cautious with these things. So just to raise the attention to, for instance, uh, we made this website uh, of uh, Gregorian Bivolaru, it's in English and there are a lot of updates there. I also have a blog, there are a lot of people who are taking attitude, so the more this pressure upon these um, authorities in Romania, through European authorities, this what we, we found the most efficient until now, or internationally, things will start to hopefully uh, become normal. Okay, uh, that's very good. Uh, now, uh, is there anything else that you have heard about this, uh, this well, this, uh, I, I don't even know what to call it, this time machine that they discovered uh, in, in the mountain, uh, mountains of Romania. Have you heard any news? In, have they told the people about it? Is this generally known in Romania? Yeah. What a, I can tell you a recent situation. There was a TV program in, um, in one of the national channels in Romania who is dealing with the, all kinds of unusual phenomena or not necessarily paranormal, everything which is out of common, so to speak. And they tried to investigate and they even sent the crew there who was taking very significant interviews with people, locals from the area. And the broadcast was interrupted and they were threatened, uh, the team was threatened, they even say it on, on, on air next time that they were threatened and then the show was suspended. Oh. So, and, and was but what it was about people local to this uh, this area this area of the mountains is that yeah, right? Yeah, they, they were they were trying to start from the book this uh, book from uh, Radu Chinamar, and then they were following different uh, leads so to speak. <laughs> so they, they went in the area. They were talking with the mayor of the city nearby, for instance, and even the mayor was saying about the presence of. Uh, unknown soldiers and things like this, which are, well, <laughs> clear proofs. Uh, and, for instance, um, earthquakes, uh, that it's completely abnormal in that area, in this mountain area, and uh, strange sounds from underground as drilling and all kinds of things. I mean, they, they, they got out a lot of interesting facts uh, in this uh, program, which was live. And then suddenly they were uh, threatened to immediately stop everything and uh, uh, in the end actually they didn't go on air. <laughs> so. Okay, uh, now you say you have been to this mountain, but I, I assume that you have not been able to go inside it, right? No, no. What, uh, what I saw there, I saw for instance uh, um, people appearing out of nowhere, not only me, we were more witnessing people appearing and just going away practically out of nowhere in a barren area, an area where, where really you cannot just appear. You can see people from great distance because there are no trees, it's above the tree line, so yes. uh, it's uh, easy to spot a person approaching and suddenly we saw people you know, 50 meters from us approaching without any explanation where we came from and when we tried to speak with them and follow them they just went away running and disappeared just like that <laughs> okay so i've seen this kind of things exactly in the area where uh, where this um, location of this uh, underground tunnels and all this is happening plus also some other phenomena which i have witnessed exactly in the sphinx area where i at least once a year, go to meditate, and uh, uh, I go with some friends there. So we know very well the area. But uh, and even particularly in 2003, I was speaking with some shepherds, which were uh, spending most of their time in that area, who were telling us before we have heard about this news exactly these stories that people came in, they locked uh, a certain uh, area completely out of visitors and. Nobody was allowed. Helicopters with no sign, uh, no um, uh, flag or no sign on it, uh, coming in and out uh, very often from there, and all these things. Which uh, then I heard it uh, from other sources. But this I encountered directly in the area. But I, 
Okay, but you're saying this you encountered these people talking about this in 2003? Yeah, well, the first uh, signs of this was in 2003. First wow. uh, signs of activity. I see. That's interesting. So uh, now, it, has any there? Be, I, I don't know this because I'm still just learning about this. Uh, I've just started. I'm halfway through the book, um, yeah. but I am going to be having Peter Moon on my radio show um, in the not too distant future, and I've done a live stream with him and so on. But but I was wondering whether or not. Um, this there has been any announcement in the world about this other than no. his book not as as far as I know there was no announcement and even in Romania even though there were a lot of voices asking questions and so on they were always uh, ignored I mean not even uh, decent denial so to speak if a denial can be decent but a decent denial they were just ignoring everything constantly even though they are very powerful uh, forces protecting. I personally, for instance, encountered the following uh, event. I was searching for uh, this, um, well, a network of underground tunnels which exist uh, in Romania. There are pictures and uh, people who have been into and I also found some. And then I was um, approached by somebody from the secret service and being told to stop immediately if I want to leave. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, this is not the first time I encountered this. I, in 1996, <laughs> uh, I had a car accident, which uh, was uh, uh, after two weeks when I was threatened to death uh, by same people. And, uh, okay, but why were you threatened back then? Because uh, I started to... Uh, I was uh, involved uh, in a party uh, we were offered as an organization the position of a council to to be uh, the secretary of a, or councillor of a parliamentarian, and uh, I was the one designated by the yoga school to go there to represent. And uh, when I was there, I saw a lot of people uh, going somehow on the back with all kind of uh, plans, and uh, they were using these masonic signals with each other all kind of uh, things, and I started to speak open in the meetings there about these things, to say, guys, if you have something to share, <laughs> share with everyone. You don't have to. And I was showing these things to my colleagues, which were, well, not accustomed to these kind of things. And uh, for a while, uh, these people were a little bit uh, angry with me, and uh, they didn't, they were just, you know, saying the uh, small uh, things uh, at the corners. One day, one of them approached me more... Uh, Firm and he said, look, soon you will be given a lesson if you don't stop completely with your so-called revelations. Because <laughs> I, was, I was talking with the president of that party and with other people, uh, in, uh, showing them that how they infiltrate the party and all these things, because I have proofs. I saw them doing and also I have documents. Uh, they were sending all kinds of uh, letters to each other, which I interfered with and so on. So in the end, they threatened me with that. I have to admit that I didn't take it very serious. And uh, two weeks after I had a car accident, I was almost killed, and um, the police started an investigation because my my tire was uh, carefully cut so that uh, it was uh, apparently an explosion of the tire, but it was uh, this uh, tubeless and it cannot have explosion. Ah. They started an investigation, they even showed me the cut and so on, and then the, the police officer who started the, the file, uh, he was moved to another city and everything was uh, ending there. I so. see, okay, so, but as far as um, what is going on with this uh, discovery, you say that it hasn't gone anywhere, it hasn't been put out in your public. Is that correct? No, no, no. It hasn't been, and it's guarded heavily. As I said, every it is time still you put any anything uh, in this area or something, suddenly uh, you are suggested to take distance. Okay. What about your teacher? Did he ever have encounters with this uh, con this uh, machine or whatever you want to call it? Well. Um, I spoke with him about this. He was talking about it long before everything came out. This is something 
I, it is one of his mysteries. He was talking about this, this kind of um, uh, the existence of such uh, devices and so on. And um, well, I thought uh, he was just talking from intuition or well, <laughs> some things. Uh, and uh, then, uh, well, I heard and I read and I encountered all these things and I started to realize that he might have been at least through remote viewing, seeing these things, at least like this. Okay. And uh, I can tell you from experience, because I also am uh, making experiments with this remote viewing and astral projection, I try together with uh, a friend of mine to to investigate there, and we have been striking by an energetic field very powerful. Yes. And, uh, well, but that's uh, just uh, maybe we were not skillful enough. Okay, well, that's very, very interesting. Do you happen to know who this person is? First of all, Radu Sina, Sin, uh, Sin, Simar. Radu Sinamar, yeah. Sinamar, yes. Have you met him? Um, well, I know who he is, but um, I, I saw that he chose not to appear publicly, and I have a reserved to speak more about his identity. I see. Okay, well that's fine. I, uh, what about this person who he was co he was contacted by, uh, this person who was inside this organization X, which is uh, sort of this top secret, um, in a way a think tank in, West, in the Western world. I think we'd call it something like a think tank. Uh, anyway, and his name was, he was Caesar according to the book, but I think this is not his real name. Had you ever heard of this man or heard rumors about this man? Well, what I heard is of the existence of such an organization and of the existence of a person very influential and very um, with a lot of knowledge about this um, occult um, happenings in Romania who is, um, well, walking around there. And uh, I know for, from a friend who worked in, the, um, in a certain department in the Secret uh, Service, um, who told me about the fact that he was um, in a mission to survey this person. But I don't know ah. if it was exactly the same person, but from the description I can connect that it could be the same because he was talking about the person who was uh, from this zero uh, or in contact with the zero department and uh, that he was playing an important role in some international events and it, it, it is uh, highly possible that it is about the same person. I so see. Uh, I, do you have, I guess it's, if you're in Romania, do you have the means by which to contact people? Like could you, if you want to, can you try to reach these people? Uh, like. Um, like, uh, we, well, Simar, Cinemar, Radu? I guess, yeah, I don't know. Now I am in Copenhagen, but um, oh. um, in about, Romania, it's, uh, I, I guess, I, I don't know. I don't keep a uh, close contact with these people. I uh, understand. Uh, what about this a person named Colonel Abadia in the military? Mm -hmm. Have you heard of him? No, I, I, I didn't investigate in this way. I see. Did you read this I, book? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yes? Okay, well, there yeah, he's I, written about in the book. He is a friend of, yeah. supposedly a friend of Caesar's. Yeah, but I didn't uh, have time to go into this, uh, into this um, details. I was, I uh, for me, the book was perfectly uh, genuine because, as I said, I have my own... Uh, let's say, experiences in this and even indirect uh, confirmation. So that's why I, I didn't consider it important to, for me to dig into, into this more, especially that my uh, preoccupation is different. Okay, well, yeah. uh, I, like I said, you know, I think that there is a, I don't know if you've heard, but 2012, there is a, a great deal of energy coming into the planet at this time. Uh, I think yes. that the authorities are, are very concerned with consciousness and the levels yes. of consciousness of people uh, around the world. And this is part of the reason they are trying to interfere with your organization, I'm sure. And yes, yes. We, 
we have a, I, I can tell you something very interesting also, another dot to connect in this respect, if you allow me. Yes, please. Hello? Go ahead. Yeah, no, I can hear. Um, in, um, I think it was 2003, uh, we um, made um, an experiment. Actually, we were conducting this kind of experiments every year, but in 2003, was uh, together with this Global Consciousness Project, uh, maybe you heard about this, uh, the Global Consciousness Project, which is having these random generators across the world that are recording different um, uh, patterns. Yes. Uh, they, they can detect anomalies in the uh, pattern of uh, randomization exactly before important events will happen. That's correct, yes. Good. And uh, at the, the moment when we did a special experiment with uh, approximately 8,000 people meditating uh, in a, with a special technique, uh, being arranged in a spiral shape and so on, um, these detectors almost all over the world uh, experienced an anomaly in the randomization. And uh, it is recorded on their webpage there, and uh, it was a very interesting fact because it was a human-generated effect on purpose. Yes. And this, I, from my research, is almost unique. Normally, these are things which are perceived and interpreted afterwards. For instance, they even detect uh, events like the um, tsunami in... Um, in Asia and other things, but they don't know what it is. They just detect an anomaly, yes. and then, then they say, wow, it was because of that, it was because of this event, and so on. But uh, now we did it somehow on purpose, using the technique, and not using millions of people. There were only 8,000 people who were tuning in, but uh, this was generating an immense wave of synchronized energy. And, uh, of course, that, uh, for some people who want to oppress that, becomes very boring. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, there is definitely something up with this uh, discovery in the mountains of Romania. And yeah. I believe that it is going to be affecting, and already is affecting, consciousness on the planet. The fact that they discovered it, the fact that it's been activated, and also the one in Iraq. It's linked to the one in Iraq. Um, and yeah. that there may well be some other ones that they have yet to discover. Perhaps they have discovered and we don't know about them in other countries around the world. Yes, there is a, a network of tunnels which uh, is um, un, um, unknown, at least nobody knows who built them, which is, at least in Europe, you can find it in major cities all over. Yes. And, uh, for sure, there are many other things there to to be discovered. But uh, again, if you go there and you try to explore these tunnels, you will not be allowed. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Okay. Well, right. No, we tried. We tried. It's not. It's not it's, I understand. <laughs> I do understand. Now, would you? Uh, do you think that this is uh, enough information, or should we get Ramona on uh, back on the line because she was dropped off? Uh, do you think that she yeah. she would have anything to add to this, or or would she prefer that you this be enough? I, she, I think she's online. I see her. Yes, I am now. Oh, oh great. Okay, time. Ramona, that's lovely. So, would you have something to add to this? There's a lot to add, but uh, I mean, you're just like like you said, an iceberg, and you just look at the tip of the iceberg with this. I mean, it's really complex on the subject. I mean, also about Romania, there are some prophecies by Sundar Singh. Did you hear about this? Mm, I don't know. Why don't you tell me about it? Mihai, can you help me? Mihai? Sorry? Yes? You have to say something about the prophecies from Sundar Singh ah, about Romania. It has a yeah, role. Yeah. Well, that just... direction is complex. Yes, there are some um, prophecies made by the, an Indian who was actually becoming Christian and uh, because of having some visions of Christ, and uh, then he he wrote a lot of very uh, known and revered works on Christianity, and when he visited Europe, he visited also Romania, and uh, suddenly he had some visions there, and uh, he was writing uh, 
a very interesting prophecy about uh, uh, kind of a spiritual um, revolution which will uh, begin at uh, in the future in time uh, in Romania and uh, the fact that there there will be discoveries which will revolutionize the planet and all all very interesting points and uh, we actually translated those uh, those uh, prophecies and uh, published them uh, because uh, they were circulating the during the communist time in a kind of uh, copy by hand because people were not allowed to I speak see. about it. And, and what are, does the prophecies have a name or anything? Well, Sundar Singh is the Indian. I will write it here. Okay, so people, uh, if they're interested to investigate further, they yeah. can do so. Um, all right, well, that's very interesting. Sundar Singh, uh, I see the name here. And uh, and then, as far as uh, you said, let's see, that there there is more information. Is is there more information about this story in terms of, uh, of, of the persecution of yoga uh, in either Romania or other countries that you know about specifically? Or is there more information that you wish to give uh, about, uh, for example, the Romani Romanian Sphinx or uh, device yeah. that was discovered? Well, for instance, I want to say that um, this phenomenon which we encountered in Romania about the persecution of a yoga school is not singular. There are other organizations which have experienced the same thing, not in Romania. For instance, there is an organization in Poland which was dealing with yoga and had exactly the same uh, treatment from the authorities. The only problem was that they, they were destroyed completely. Oh. There's no organization from an organization of, I don't know, 20, 30,000 of people. They just uh, vanished in thin air, being attacked heavily by the authorities. And in exactly the same manner, with the same kind of accusations, with the same kind of... Uh, brutality from the authorities and the media in the same time. And uh, the only problem was that they were dealing with a spirituality which, were trans which was transforming. Uh, we have encountered the same with the Danish school. The Danish yoga school have encountered um, attacks from the media sometimes, even though Denmark is a all relaxed country, but uh, the relaxation in a way is the relaxation of um, a regime which is already controlling very well the situation. Oh, yes, <laughs> very so, much so. I have heard stories about this. Yeah, yeah it's uh, they are very, very well relaxed because of <laughs> controlling very well the situation. Um, it, it is, I think, asleep is a little more to the point. Yeah. Yeah. So we have encountered exactly the same phenomenon here. Uh, if you go within the frame that is designed for you, you are uh, fine. If you touch the limit, then you are uh, retaliated with great power. And uh, we have encountered that. Uh, media on top of us, uh, strange accusations, uh, uh, all kind of extraordinary strange things um, uh, on us. And then in the end, to, for them to say, well, it seems we didn't check the sources. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, now, if any other countries uh, where where the yoga, uh, where yoga or spiritual disciplines are being uh, that you know about that that are related to your organization or something like that? Well, I know, for instance, in France, they have uh, a heavy, let's say, um, resistance against anything which is spiritual and uh, I have in my position a document which was circulating uh, through uh, this Minister of Internal Affairs of different European countries but it was issued by France a document how to deal with spiritual organizations it was a kind of manual and in this there was point by point and I have to tell you it was matching everything we have encountered for instance discrediting the leaders, uh, uh, accusing them of, and they were even suggested subjects, 
sexual uh, things, uh, money laundry. They were suggesting subjects which are recommended to use to discredit the leaders. Then they were um, discrediting the organization, insinuation through the media. All, all the things were very well, uh, let's say, explained there as a manual to deal with organizations. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, it happened that we have uh, such a um, document, and yeah, we, we, I was even showing this document to some officials afterwards, people who I kind of realized that they are innocent, they don't realize what's going on behind the curtain, and uh, everybody was shocked. <laughs> Unfortunately, the, the censorship is very strong. And uh, the, the self-censorship is now, I would say, more strong than uh, ever. And simply people refuse to believe. They say, well, sorry, but if I believe this, it means everything I believed in the last 45 years was wrong. And I cannot afford that. <laughs> this I, is a, I see. This is almost quotation from uh, uh, such a person. So yes. it is like this. So in France it is like this, um, unfortunately we have encountered the same uh, uh, kind of experiences also in Italy. Uh, um, okay, and uh, what about Ger Germany and Switzerland? Well, in Switzerland I don't know what is the situation, I didn't hear anything but I also don't know if they have anything. In Germany, I know that there is a big uh, battle between the different spiritual schools and so on who are trying to kind of put the things more legal, more in order, like uh, to force the government to acknowledge uh, different disciplines and, uh, well, to, to be less vulnerable in this way. Um, our uh, school, because we also have a school in Germany, have encountered some uh, resistance, but not as heavy as in other places. I see. So, it could be that there, there are more people who are awake and also on the side of the power, and they keep a balance. Uh-huh, okay. Uh, it could... All right, well, uh, at this time, I, I guess we will close this down. We've been going for a while, and uh, it's been a lot of good, very good information, and I appreciate uh, both of you coming on this show today and this is a completely impromptu uh, get together we we just uh, connected and decided to do it and on the spur of the moment and here we are so uh, I will thank you for coming on with me uh, and this is Project Camelot and we will put this out there on the web and see what we get in return us uh, Hopefully there will be a raising of awareness about these very important subjects uh, and specifically to do with uh, what organizations such as yours are encountering at this time where consciousness is raising around the planet and people are discovering uh, new aspects of themselves and, and ways to raise their, their vibration, etc., etc. So um, good luck with, with what you are doing. And feel free to contact me in the future. Um, I don't know if you're in touch with your teacher, but uh, if he has some stories and yes. he would like to share them, uh, he's welcome to come and talk with us as well. I already informed him. I already informed him about this, and uh, he's open. And uh, well, we have to see the technical part because, as for the moment, uh, he was threatened several times that he will be killed and. Uh, even the Swedish police now has under investigation a lot of letters of threat on his life. So, for this reason, he is a little bit more remote. So, <laughs> he doesn't yes. interact so much with <laughs> the exterior for reasons which I hope people will understand. But, uh, yeah, we will try to arrange uh, this because uh, it could be done uh, by internet or some. Yes. Uh, well, if yes. there is also any more information about uh, this very interesting device that has been discovered in the Romanian mountains uh, and or the people that are connected with it, I would appreciate it if you would contact me and let me know. Yeah, I think Ramona is very good in uh, this and uh, I hope she will uh, make this link, maybe even with the, the author and other people. 
Okay, that would be great. Well, I'll try. I don't promise, but who knows? Okay, <laughs> so that's very, very good. All right, thank you very much, and, and have a good night, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Yuta. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you so much, Kerry. <laughs> hope to talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Right, thank you. So why don't, uh, do you want to start, Ramona? Yes, I can talk to you. I mean, I'm practicing yoga in the school for almost 20 years. And it's a school that has really big value, like in knowledge, awareness. It's a yoga school, traditional teachings. And uh, it has helped me a lot and many other people in all these years. And uh, what I found out uh, all along these years is that um, especially in Romania, also during the coming in this, this uh, spiritual movement was like forbidden or something anyway, threatened and people that were practicing it, even if most of them are uh, intellectual, they were having problems after only joining the courses. There were many makeups and uh, it's something like uh, you should be, you, should have, you are probably having problems if you say that you practice yoga and then uh, it's a long story that uh, Mihai will tell you. I mean, he's much more involved in this. And uh, so okay. shortly for now, yeah. All right. Uh, Mihail, had, however you say your name, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Uh, you, you can also turn on your video because you do have video, correct? I, I, I think I turned it on. I thought I turned it on. Okay. Looks like it's not, it's not on at the moment. Um, Just a second. Um, mm. Yeah, I don't see the button for video anymore. Now we are on this conference. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I'm not sure what to do about that. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it, it may be because we called uh, in Ramona. I think, yeah, the conference might not uh, allow the video because I was I, I saw the video starting and when you called uh, when you called Ramona it disappeared. Okay, uh, so what we will do is just use the audio then for this this. Yes. Well, for this. Um, special arrest, a special building the regime has at the time, uh, using some uh, yogic methods that he was applying at the time. It's the only case of a person managing to escape the, the secret uh, police. And, okay, uh, now, it, uh, what year was this? This was 1987. Okay, and at that time when he escaped using, as you say, special powers, yeah. uh, and and is it, this is your teacher? Yes, he's okay. my teacher. His name is Gregorian Bivolaru. Okay, is there evidence of this? In other words, uh, documentation, other kinds of evidence? Yeah, there are some uh, testimonies about this, plus one of the, well, indirect, but quite obvious evidence, was that he, afterwards, when he himself uh, went to the authorities after a while, because he did this gesture just as a protest. He didn't want to, he didn't have anywhere to run away, actually, uh, because Romania was surrounded in, in this communist bloc, and uh, he just wanted to protest against the fact that uh, he was illegally arrested and so on, and he was tried after that, for escaping the arrest of the secret police. So practically, he is also uh, at the time a paradoxic, uh, para, uh, juridical paradox, because he was uh, in prison for the fact that he escaped the prison. But there is absolutely no explanation <laughs> why he was in prison. Okay. So we have this documented very well. We have uh, the whole file, which is, as I said, the juridical paradox. 
Okay. Is, uh, are, is this on the internet anywhere? Um, I will put here, yes, it is on gregorianvivoraro.com. I can write it uh, on Okay, on down. When, uh, well, you can send it to me after, but uh, yes, if you want to type it in there, you can as well. Um, and then I'll make it visible for people to see. Um, okay, so... So let me say that to begin with. And this is Carrie Cassidy from Project Camelot. And uh, today is Monday, uh, let's see, May 14th. And uh, I am here with Ramona and Mahe. I'm not sure how you say your, your names very well. So uh, are you both from Romania or, or are you from different places? Yes, no, I'm from Romania. Yeah, and she's also from Romania. Okay. And uh, you are involved in a yoga, I don't know if you call it a clinic or a workshop or, or, or organization? A school. A school, okay. And you've been having some problems with, uh, with the school uh, with, for some reason, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so why don't you first introduce yourselves uh, one at a time and tell a little bit about yourself how you got involved in, in you know, the, the uh, organization, et cetera, et cetera. And then we will uh, sort of, I will ask questions to get into the story as to what's going on over there, okay? Yes. Okay, Pre presentation. Uh, so, Mihail, can you tell a little bit about yourself and what the situation is uh, with regard to the, comp the, the organization and what's going on there? Yes. So, first of all, my name is Mihai Stoyan. This is how you spell it in Romanian. So, um, I started it um, within this uh, yoga school in 1989. And uh, I, uh, as a profession, I am formed as a scientific researcher in, uh, uh, first in nuclear technology, and then I specialized in artificial intelligence. Uh, this is my background, but of course I also studied yoga, tantra, and I'm teaching since 1993 already, I'm teaching yoga. So th this I did parallel with um, the other activities in university and in the scientific field where I was working. Currently I'm living in Copenhagen since uh, 2002, and I'm coordinating a yoga school here in Copenhagen, which is in fact a sister school with the one in Romania. And uh, well, um, the situation with this um, uh, yoga school from Romania is uh, in fact I, what I would call a um, signaling factor for some underground uh, phenomena which happen in the society generally, maybe not only in Romania. We have some uh, clear indications that it's not only in Romania um, what we have encountered uh, there. So, um, very few know that in uh, the communist time, in, before 1989, in Romania yoga was forbidden. Uh, since 1982, it was a law and uh, uh, during the time everybody who would practice yoga or karate 
or anything which is uh, this uh, oriental spirituality would be put in jail. And then, <laughs> well, at that, that time, that, it, um, that seems very strange. Well, it is very strange, and uh, actually, it has some relevance for the story because you see, the communists were uh, afraid of. Um, you know, conspirations, they were afraid of all kinds of things, but it's very strange that at a certain point they were afraid of yoga. And that reveals, in fact, a kind of other force, which was, even in the communist time, behind the screen, so to speak, or behind the stage. And this force was, in fact, what we call the occult power. That was behind the communism and also afraid of anyone who will try to, let's say, study spirituality, to free the mind of people and so on. All these aspects were kind of regarded with great fear by the authorities at that time. And they went so far as to put in 1982 a law against these kind of practices and uh, many people were put in jail because of practicing yoga, because of being in a martial art club, things like that. And uh, uh, my teacher, uh, about which we will uh, talk a little later, he is the one who was actually put in jail several times by the communists because of uh, what they say at the time, he was trying to kill Ceausescu, the communist dictator of Romania at that time, with paranormal powers. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> so that was uh, one of the things which can already put a kind of um, question mark upon this, uh, well, intentions of the communist regime. Then um, also he was the one, the only person in um, Romania during the communist regime who escaped the Securitate. Securitate was the name of the secret police during the communist regime and it was very fierce in uh, Romania and quite famous in Europe, the Romanian secret service of the communist regime. And um, uh, once when he was arrested, he escaped this uh, 